Praise the Lord, people of God. What a delight. Today is yet another beautiful day. Excited to get into what we started yesterday with Reverend Shegun Olugbemi. It was wonderful. Thank you for praying along. Thank you for standing by. And as we are going to start right away, we start with worship, of course. And then we're going to bring him in right away. Get ready, guys. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way. Praise the Lord. Lord, I give you my heart. What a delight. Well, as I said yesterday, we're going to go straight. We'll bring in the Reverend, then we're going to pray and start right away. Help me welcome Reverend Shegun Olugwemi. Good evening, sir. Thank you, Reverend. It's a, it's a joy to have you back, and we're so glad to have you. Please, if you just go straight ahead and uh, let's pray, open up with prayer with us, for us, and then we'll just go right in into today's teaching. Amen. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the privilege of sharing together on this platform. And we know that your spirit is already here to share with us. And you give us understanding, you give us revelation, and you give us a heart of obedience. And by your spirit, we will move in obedience to your word yes, and we become who you commanded us to be. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So please go ahead, sir. We are all ears and waiting. Yes, I remember yesterday we, we, we went through some. Um, yeah, we went through, we went through some few things yesterday. We um, we spoke about the the eight pillars of disciples of discipleship, and the reason why the church has um, neglected this great commission. And we said the first thing is that the commission is not to make converts; is to make disciples. Mm. And we saw that in the four gospels, and every one of them presented an aspect of the message. One said go preach. The other said in Luke, Mark said, go preach to all the world with signs and wonders. And Luke says, wait for the power from on high. Mm. And then Matthew began to say, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. Mm. And John says, feed my lambs. Then from feeding my lamb, they become sheep. And then you can feed the sheep and sheep gives back to other sheep. Mm. So we see that Jesus' assignment to us is progressive. And I said some, you know, I made some points yesterday, and one of it is that although the, the manufacture of it, or the, the miracle of salvation is an instant experience, mm. the manufacture or manufacturing of a saint is a lifetime assignment. Mm. So discipleship is not something that happens overnight. It's progressive, it's gradual, is measurable, is attainable, is obtainable, is visible. Mm. Is visible. You can know whether a person is a disciple or not. Mm. And there's a clear reason why Jesus did not say, "You are Christians." He didn't say, "You are little Christian. You are little Christ." Instead, he said, "You are my disciples." In fact, some of the nomenclatures he used were disciples, sheep among wolves. Uh, be wise as serpent, uh, be as dove, be innocent as dove. Mm. He says you are a city set on high that cannot be hidden. Then you are the light of the world. Mm. These are the nomenclatures that he used concerning his disciples. Yes, sir. He, there's no, isn't it amazing? He never called them Christians anywhere. Mm. Because his goal is that a disciple, number one, will be as his master. Mm. That's the, again, that's number one goal. In fact, in Mark chapter, chapter 4, in verse uh, 12 and 13, we're told that he prayed all night. And when he woke up in the morning, early in the morning, he appointed disciples, 12, that they might be with him. Mm. And, and it's a conjunction that they might be with him and that he might send them forth to preach the gospel. Mm. The way we, we operate today is like Jesus, we, we appoint people, we appoint workers, we appoint members to be with us. 
not to be with us, or, but we send them out to go to preach. But that's not, Jesus' goal was first that they would be with him in the content of their characters. Yes, sir. And then afterward, he will send them out. And we saw that in chapter, chapter 4 of Acts of the Apostles, verse 13, they took knowledge of them that they had been, been with, the with Lord. Jesus. Hmm. They didn't say they took knowledge of them that they were sent out by Jesus to work miracles. Hmm. They that they had been with Jesus. So Jesus' goal was accomplishing the be with him had stained them, had, I don't want to use the word, but contaminated their religion. So much so that these people, you could do, okay, let's see, let me quickly use an analogy. Do you know that being with Jesus for just three and a half years became so evident that when Peter was denying that he knew him, and, and, and it was no longer possible. In fact, he denied the first, the second, and the third time. And when he was denying to that young woman, the woman was saying, even the way you are speaking, is still sounding like him. Mm. The denier was even making you look more like him. <laughs> see, because if you have really been with Jesus, it becomes difficult for him to deny you in his mm. deny you and deny himself in your life. Yeah. That's what discipleship does. Wow. You know. And so we also saw that the first the disciple must be as his master. And then we saw again that. We have to bear the cross. It is, it is inconceivable to assume that the Lord, you see, everywhere you talk about Jesus Christ is synonymous with the cross. It's synonymous mm. with the cross. Yes, sir. You can't, for the life of me, assume you are, that you're going to be a disciple of the one who died on the cross without carrying your own cross. Mm. It's not possible. You must have your own cross to carry. And unfortunately, some of the crosses that he's given out today, we, we want to explain it away fundamental human right, you want to offend, a, you know, explain it away. This is just my temperament. I am usually an, an irritant. I'm usually very temperamental. I am this and that. But where is your cross? Hmm. You have been persecuted and then you're fighting and you're cursing. Where, where is your cross? Where is your cross? So, and the third thing we talked about is deny yourself. He says, hmm. you cannot be my disciple except you deny yourself. And I did explain that there's a difference between Self-denier and deny self. Yes, Self-denier is asceticism. It is telling yourself, it's, it's, it's deny yourself of certain, you know, things, certain privileges, certain opportunities, and other things. You deny yourself of those. But when you talk about deny self, is telling self that it does not have a right Over to you. exist. Hmm. It does not have the right to certain privileges or certain things, pleasure that he wants to take because he's been purchased. That self has been purchased. Mm. And I explained that Jesus had dual ownership on us, one by creation and the other one by redemption. Mm. And because of those dual ownership, it is not a believer, a disciple cannot possibly live to himself. Mm. That is the realm in which Paul was writing. He said, whether we live we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Yes. So whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. Hmm. That is what who a disciple is. Whether he lives or he dies, he, he belongs to the Lord. He is the Lord's. Hmm. That is it. He is the Lord's. And so he no longer belongs to himself. And the fourth thing is we mentioned yesterday is forsaking all. A disciple has to forsake all. <laughs> he can't probably, you know, I don't know how you're going to read the Gospels, how you're going to read the New Testament without mentioning the fact that all, forsaking all, giving all, is the foundation on which the New Testament is laid. Amen. We mentioned that yesterday. Yes, sir. The kingdom of God is like a man who went to look for treasure. He found a field that contains treasure. Then he sells all he has mm. to purchase the treasure field, to purchase the field that has the treasure. And Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all other things shall be added to you. Yes, sir. The kingdom of God is like a goodly pair. It says in Matthew chapter 13 also, it's like a goodly pair in which a merchant is looking for to buy. Then he goes in and he founds this goodly pair. Then he says, oh, and he comes to buy that. Hmm. And Peter said to him, Master, we have given up all. Oh. What shall be our reward. Mm. In the New Testament, we are not told about giving 10%. We are not told about 20%. We are not told about percentage. Yeah. 
we are told about all. It's as God has prospered you. And if we take this thing rightly, people will understand that if God has dual ownership of their lives, then giving cannot be an issue. No. It can't be an issue. We went out today. I don't. I, I, I don't mean to say this, but you know, you know that uh, Pastor Lee is being with me and and Amos and 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 we went out and all that we were purchasing today. They wouldn't let me pay. They just say we want to make this work, and they just kept paying hmm. and buying those things. I said, let's go home and make it work. Hmm. And I don't know. I know he paid his tight. He gave more than that. But when the need called. You know, when, when the need arose for us to do certain things, he's ready to pump everything into it. Yeah. That is what a disciple looks like. Yeah. He no longer has anything, you know, to fight with God. There's nothing to struggle with. Yeah. There is no need to shout to say, well, uh, Lord, I can't give that. You don't need that. You don't need a preacher to tell you that. You just know what to do because mm. you belong to the Lord. Mm. And number five, can I can I carry on? You have some things to say, Pastor. No, please Let's go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. I'm I'm just okay. taking it in. Just I want to give you as much time as, as possible. Go ahead, sir. Number five. All right. Number number five is supreme love for God and others. And that you can see in Luke chapter 14, verse 26. You see, Luke, Luke chapter 14, verse 26. And Jesus will say, you cannot love me, you cannot follow me, you cannot be my disciple if you do not love all. You cannot love, you can, it's just not possible. It's not conceivable. The Bible says, God is love. Mm. And whoever loves is of God. So if God is love, and whoever loves is of God, then it's not conceivable that you're a disciple of the one who is love, who came to, for God so loved the world that he mm. gave his only begotten son. If the demonstration of love, if the manifestation of love is the release of Jesus Christ and mm. Jesus Christ himself, you see, because it's a two-way deal, the offering must be as willing as the offerer. Ah. It is not enough for Abraham to want to sacrifice Isaac. Isaac must also be, be willing, willing to lay down his own life yes, sir. without struggle. You know, and so he, Isaac was willing to remain on the altar without struggling with the father. I said, put the knife there. No, no, no problem. Because if the young man was ready to run away, then the father cannot meet him. He's a That's young true. man. That's true. Why the father was an old man. So, but here is it. The man, the, 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 the offering must be as willing as the offerer. So it was okay that the father wanted to send his son. He wanted to come in the person of Jesus to save us. But it was also most important that Jesus must be willing to accept that responsibility to mm. lay down his life. Mm. So he says, no man takes my life from me. I, I lay it down, it down so I can have power to take it. So mm. that is what love is all about. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But for his son so loved the world that he gave his life. Mm. <laughs> so... So there is no way you can you can teach about the Christian life, you can teach about discipleship, except you teach it surrounding love. Hmm. It has to be love. That is the, the thing. And therefore, you see that, you know, I don't know, there is even an Old Testament demonstration or explanation of this. In Exodus chapter 21, there was yes, a sir. servant there. The Bible says, this is, these are the rules for releasing a Hebrew servant. If you have a servant, when he served his time, you release him. Mm. But when you're going to release him, you want to ask him, you are released now. If you came with your wife, go with your wife and your children. But if the servant shall say, I love my master, then I love what I do here. I enjoy my relationship. And I enjoy, you know, and I love my wife. I love my children. I love all that. So I don't want to go. Then you bring his ear to the door and you nail it there. He becomes a bond servant. Mm. It is not, he becomes a servant by choice. Mm. And so until you have come to that point, discipleship is when you decided that although I am free, I choose to be free. I choose to be a bond servant of Jesus Christ. Then you have not become a disciple. Mm. 
Wow. And that is why you see, you hear John saying things like, John, the born servant of Christ. The reason he was called a born, he called himself a born servant is that I am exercising my freedom to remain a servant. Wow. And it is to those people that the revelation comes into. Mm. And then you see in the book of Revelation, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which he has, which he has given him to show his saints, to show the church. It's only a bond servant that is entitled to those divine revelations. Wow. So you will see that the pattern for being a disciple is that I love my master first. Then I love what he has called me to do second. Mm. Then I love the people that came into my life as a result of this relationship with my master. So then tell me how you can say you are a believer, you love people only on, on the basis of your denomination, on the basis mm. of your tribe, on the basis of your color, on mm. the basis of your race. Oh, anyway, I don't know if there's anything different from human race. There are no animal race anyway. But you know, you love people because you know, in the, in the early days, Pastor, you will remember yes, when there was this revi uh, revival time here, and we always hear things like, I don't care which church you belong to. Yes, so and we sing that, I don't care which tribe you belong, you belong to. to. But as far as our Jesus is one, if by grace through faith you have been saved, you are my brother, shake my hands. Amen. You are my sister, shake my hands. So we don't care about tribes. There's no ethnicity. There's no color. There is no whatever. There's nothing. There's no denomination. I just, all I care about is that Jesus has become your Lord and Savior. Yes, you are my brother. You are my sister. No matter where you are located uh, in the world. Wow. So you can't, and Jesus says, you cannot be my disciple, except there is that, that love. You need to have supreme love for God and for his people. For others. Wow. And number six, number six, abiding in his word i i think i just finished it so that you can ask a question yes, abiding sir. in his word john chapter 6 i mean chapter 8 in verse 30 to 32 where he's saying if you are my disciple you will abide in my love you mm. will abide in my word you see i don't understand these people who claim to be believers who claim to be christians and they do not love the word of god Hmm. You wake up in the morning and your delight is not in his word. The statements coming out of your mind, you speak throughout the whole day of the 30 of the 20,000 words you have as a man, hmm. of the 30,000 words or something, you know, words, you know, your quota for the day that you see. I, I don't understand how you can say those words and the words of God are not pro proceeding hmm. out of your mouth. Hmm. It is by that word, the, by that word that the Bible says, he created all things. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Wow. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. Yes. Sir. The light of the world. And then he says in, in, in Hebrews chapter 1 that he's upholding all things by the power of his word, his word or by the word of his power. And according to the psalmist, he has even extolled his word above his name. Hmm. And if the word and forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And then he says, all things continue in, the, in their ordinances according to your word, hmm. because they are your servants. So everything runs by the word of God. And if these things are so, how much can you be a disciple of Jesus, of the word? He is the living word. And now you don't have the written word in your life. Hmm. It's not possible. <laughs> I'm trying not to say anything, sir. <laughs> You know that the, 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 you... go ahead, please. The scripture you like the the, the the I got this picture of that word that he has exalted his his word, uh, uh, his name. No, no, he has exalted his word above his name. Above his name. God has yeah. exalted his word above his name. Now a lot of people just go and like you know like calling the name of Jesus is like praying. I remember the disciples yeah. when they were in the boats with Jesus and, and there was a storm and all that. And they all went to him, Jesus, 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 don't you care that we perish? That's, that's in a way praying, we're praying to the Lord, oh God, I'm perishing, I'm perishing. And Jesus woke up and said, what are you guys doing? Just speak the word. And he spoke Speech. and spoke, he, he woke up and spoke the word. So that, that yeah. picture stays very strong with me. The word 
above his name. Not just praying. A lot of us today, we just pray like we're, you know, we are just punching the air without the word. Yeah. My, my. Without the word. That's right. So, and, and that's, well, that's one of the things that I think you see missing, you know, in discipleship today. Mm. That's what, one thing that's missing. When we got saved a few years ago, um, <laughs> what we knew <laughs> was just the word. Yes, sir. I, like I shared yesterday, when I got born again, I finished the New Testament in three weeks. Wow. I didn't even know if it was possible. I was so engrossed in the word. I enjoyed it so much that, like the service you say, sweeter than honeycomb. Mm. I enjoyed the words that I was reading. That I said, do you mean this thing had me existing? I didn't know if this word had ever existed. Why wow. is it that I didn't know? You know, and I went to the Old Testament and I was just reading and I was reading. Do you know that by the time I was two years old in the Lord? No, no, I think uh, I got filled with the Holy Ghost September the 18th, mm. 1983. Mm. By the time it was 1984, 1985, I could not do my quiet time with less than between 15 to 25 chapters a day. Wow. If I had not read 15 to 25 chapters a day, I could not enjoy the word of God. <laughs> hmm. So I couldn't just pick Ephesians and read it and thought I've read that. I'm going to have to pick Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and just combine together. That's my quiet time. That's so true. You know, so most of the scriptures I preach today, they are things that I took in all those years. Yes, I sir. just put them and I, I saw on the line my Bible so much, and as I was underlining the Bibles, marking the Bible, marking those passages, they were marking my life. Exactly. I, had, I mean, in my library today, I can show you volumes of, you know, Jota and you know the you know legal parts that I've written on during my. I was writing Bible commentaries. Every verse that I wrote, that I read, I was writing commentaries on them, and that is why we are where we are today. Hmm. But here we are. We are having a generation that are living on daily manner. Hmm. And somebody has taken about three or four passages and they will write long stories and they will read those stories as being their quiet time. Which is not Come on, enough. somebody needs to wake me up that this is a joke. We need to just do something differently. Is the word. And nobody... Okay, so... Can I continue? I just wait for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go. I want us to know at least with the pillars of foundation, uh, okay. the pillars of discipleship that we are through with that at least now. And then we launch to, to the All right. today. So number seven. Yes, sir. Because I, I mentioned eight pillars. Number seven is love for others. That is John chapter 13. Of course, you know, as he began to talk about the love from verse 34, 35. He said, by these hmm. shall men know that you are my disciples. Mm. He didn't say when you walk signs and wonders. Is that not amazing mm. that our Lord, concerning whom we have been said to be like, yes, sir, <coughs> is now saying to us, by the kind of love you exercise for others, <coughs> may we know you are my disciple. Mm. I can tell you this: <coughs> that I've seen denominations fighting. I've seen local assembly fighting within themselves. So much that the same, you know, the same denomination with two branches attacking each other, and they needed an unbeliever, not in court, but they needed a local chief who is of another religion <laughs> to look into their matters. Wow. And then he looked at them in the face and said, I thought both of you are pastors. Mm. I thought both of you are of the same denomination. If you continue to do this way, I'm going to petition you to government that government should proscribe you. Wow. Look at the way we work against each other. Look at the way we fight. Look at the way we quarrel about doctrines, mm. about all that. Do you know one thing, Reverend? There is no one that is going to make it to heaven on the basis of his denomination, on the basis of their doctrinal mm. beliefs, on the basis of you are only going to get there by the shed blood of Jesus of Christ, Jesus that you Christ. have been cleansed by the blood. Wow. So true. We will never agree on doctrine. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. You, if you have not read that place and you're watching us, just go to Ephesians later and read chapter 4. And what did he say? He has given us uh, uh, the prophets, the, uh, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, 
till we all come to the unity hmm. of faith. Now, you go to chapter uh, from verse 1 in that chapter 4 and devote it to keep the unity of the spirit yeah. in the bond of peace. Hmm. The unity of the spirit okay. precedes unity of knowledge. Can so you repeat that? Our sir? job is to keep the unity of the spirit. Sir, can you and can, can we, can we dwell there a little unity, bit, sir? Sorry? Can we dwell there a little bit? Can you can you expand a little bit? The unity of the spirit yes. supersedes the unity yeah. on doctrine. Of knowledge. Of knowledge. That's right. Yes, sir. Because when you go to Ephesians chapter 4, when you go to Ephesians chapter 4, yes, sir. And then you begin to read, you know, because we are we are limited on time, but I want them to read that. And the value to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That is the admonition. Hmm. But then when you now go down to verse 10, 11, it now give some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the edifying of the body, yes. for the maturity of the saints that the saints will now mature to do the work of their ministry and then they are no longer carried to, to fro. Now, that is maturity now. Yes, sir. It is at that level of maturity that until we all come to the fullness of the stature of Christ and we come to the fullness of the stature unto the knowledge. So knowledge comes in the age of maturity. When we are relating in the spirit, mm. maturing in the spirit, then we can come to the same level of knowledge, mm. ultimately. But if we don't mature at the same frequency, at the same level, then we cannot come to the same level of knowledge. We can't trust each other's knowledge. No, we can't trust each other's knowledge. And we are, by nature, human beings will always attack what they don't understand. Mm, so true. And so since you're going to, they're going to attack what they don't understand, a lot of people were going to patient until they grow to where we are. It is not everyone who started the Christian life with me that understand the scripture or understand God the way I do. Yeah. Because we are different levels. But I cannot use that as yastic to relating with them. Hmm. Or somebody asked me, what if there's a challenge, uh, this person, do you know whether this person will go to her? I, I, I said, I, I have an answer for you. And he said, what's the answer? I said, the answer is, you know, when I was the Secretary General to the Council of Heaven, I had a roll call of those who would go to heaven. <laughs> but after I had resigned many years ago and I handed it over back to the man, there's one Holy Spirit and I'm not him. There's one God and I'm not him. Therefore, who goes to heaven, I leave it in the hand of the man who died to save us yeah. and leave me alone. <laughs> And so, and I was in a church. I don't know. I think I shared this with you. I was in New York, and I and I saw this church. I just felt led to worship there, and I and I met the pastor, booked appointment with him. We were sharing together, and as I was reaching out to him, I just started prophesying to him. I just started prophesying, and I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm feeling an anointing right now. There's somebody that is watching this program right now, mm. and the Lord has been speaking to you about the things you are hearing now. And then it appears as if you are crazy or it appears as if you are just being too religious or taken to the stream. God wants me to tell you that he is the one that was taking you there. And it's the realm he is taking you to. He wants to take you to a deeper realm, a deeper walk with him. That's why you, you, you'll be hearing those things. So just let God have his way. Let him have complete flow. Just, just flow along with the Lord. I'm sorry I had to bring to do that. Ah, no sorry, but sir. Then, Feel free. <laughs> You know, so this pastor, you know, began to, and I began to prophesy to him. I began to minister. He was sick in his body. He had skin disease. I started prophesying and ministering to him, and I was just lost in the spirit. And when I finished, he thanked me because I told him things that were happening, that happened in his life, and that were happening, and that will happen. Wow. And then he thanked me so much. Then he said, how do you baptize? How wow. do you, what kind of baptism do you believe in? So instantly I knew he was a Unitarian. You know, Jesus only, Jesus is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and all that. And, and, and I said, I told him, I said, since I came to you, have I spoken to you about baptism or have I spoken to you about Jesus? Mm. I said, my friend, everyone who claims to be a Christian come, has one agreement, that there is one God. He sent his son to die for us. He died and gave his life for us. Mm. And if we receive him, we become children of God. Yeah. I said, that is enough for me. I could care less how you baptize. Mm. That is enough for me. 
He said to me, Pastor, will you preach for me on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> and from that day, when I'm in America, he gives his pulpit over to me, not minding our doctrinal difference. Hmm. You know. It's so true, sir, because this has divided the church more than it has united the church. And, uh, and as, right. as, as you rightly said, we will almost never uh, see the same thing. I mean, the, the, our perceptions are different. And we see things, uh, things, the way we see things are colored by our upbringing, where we grew up, our experiences. And we don't have the same of these things. And so if we can unite under the umbrella of the Holy Spirit, then it, it, it sifts out. These this doctrinal differences just pale compared to the love that Christ has for us all. My God. Right. Wow. That's right. So, so we, cannot, we cannot judge each other by our doctrinal understanding. And, and I see a lot of young people coming up today. Apostle this, apostle that, uh, prophet this, prophet that. And they're attacking people on doctrine. Oh, this is doctrine. Oh, that is. And I'm saying to them, you know in part, and you prophesy in part. Mm. You know in part, and you teach in part. Mm. In fact, the completeness, the completeness of your revelation is with somebody else. Mm. Because someone else is holding the other part you don't see. Exactly. And all error is, is truth straight to the extreme. That's what we <laughs> call error. Every error has an element of truth. It is only truth that is stretched to the extreme. When you take it beyond, you know, what it's supposed to be without balance, then that is error. <laughs> somebody somebody <laughs> says exaggeration is a department of lie and error. It's a truth that is stretched. That's right. That's right. Wow. That's right. Wow. Let me just... So, so when you stretch truth to a very large extent, you stretch it and you stretch it, then it becomes, you know, it, lose, it loses its value. Yes, and then you get into error. Everyone who is in error in one doctrinal area or the other today has, has held on to the truth. There's always an element of truth hmm. that they held on to. But once you stretch it beyond what is supposed to, beyond what he's saying, then it becomes... A lie. It becomes Amen. an error. Amazing. And so wow. we shouldn't relate with each other on the basis of doctrine. We relate with each other on the basis of the finished work of Christ. Hallelujah. And see, sir, yes, we sir. are at different levels. Every one of us are using Jacob's ladder. We are all using that ladder. <laughs> and we are different rungs of that ladder. My God. You can't crucify me because I'm still at the 10th rung and you are already at the 15th rung. The ladder is from heaven to earth. You will climb that ladder all the days of your life. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's a ladder from heaven to earth. A ladder has different levels. Ladder? And we are not on the same. My God. We are not on the same rung of the ladder. <laughs> and as long as you are here, you are going to be needing that ladder. Hmm. So don't push me down. Don't kick me out. Don't, don't curse me out. We are all on the same ladder. We are using Jacob's ladder. It's hmm. the grace of God. Just because I don't see what you see doesn't make you wrong. Hmm. <laughs> so, so the mere fact that I don't know what you are saying now, I don't understand what you're doing, because the last time God was leading the children of Israel, he was leading them by pillar of cloud by the, by the day, and pillar of fire by night. by night. It was light to Israel, it was darkness to the Egyptians. <laughs> and so if God is leading me, if God is speaking to me, and you don't understand what I'm talking about, it does not necessarily make it wrong. It's just that you don't understand. It's darkness to you. But it's light to And me. if your destiny or your assignment is not connected to mine, you don't need that revelation. God won't show you. Sir. If you don't what? know that, yes. <laughs> Can you say that a little bit? I have a question tied to that. Please repeat that again. <laughs> okay. Here is the mistake we make. We always assume that if a person is holding certain truth, or saying certain thing, mm. um, we have to come into that in, in agreement because God will speak to us. Mm. But that's not true. God was leading the children of Israel, and the means by which he led them was a pillar of cloud in the day, yeah. pillar of fire by the night. Yeah. It was light to the children of Israel, but it was darkness, darkness. to those who were observing. So it is all together. And yet the cloud was between the Egyptian and between Israel and the Egyptians, but mm. it was still darkness to them. 
So it is altogether possible that you are even my friend mm. and God is speaking to me and it's complete darkness to you yeah. because you are not a part of the assignment. Ah. When, Jesus was going to be, when Jesus was going to be born, the process of his birth, the, the, God arranged it, the prophet that will come and the angel that will come in to speak. If you are John the Baptist, he will speak to you. If you are Elizabeth, he will speak to you. If you are Anna, he will speak to you. If you are Simeon, you will see the Lord's salvation. If you are Mary, he will speak to you. If you are the wise men, he will speak to you. But outside of these, you know, I mean, or the shepherd, he will speak to you. But every other thing, he doesn't need to talk to you. You are not part of the vision. You are not part of the plan. Just shut up and let God move. Woo! I you guess know, this is say, where... Don't say anything. Keep quiet. I guess this yes, is right. where... This is where a lot of people, a lot of us in the body of Christ have problems. When the Lord speaks to people, you are trying to find a consensus. You are trying to That's find right. a democratic agreement. How can it be? Because the light that is shining is shining to you, but because the other people are not connected to that word, to that assignment, they will not see what you are seeing. So trying to ask people what you think God is saying is not going to help. That's what you're saying. Yes, yeah. Wow. That's right. It's not by concessions, it's by communion. <laughs> if you're not in communion with me, you, you are not going to hear what God is saying. Woo! <laughs> it's not by concessions. It's by communion. I mean, it's by communion. Look at what happened when we spoke last year. And I, and, and, and I went to your page and I said to you, what you're doing is of God. I said, you're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. I love it. I'm praying for you. You're sharing the word of God. You're going to succeed. You're going to excel. Wow. And I kept encouraging you. And you said, you, you wrote back to me. You said, this means a lot to me yes. coming from someone like you. Can I call you? And then we began fellowshipping. And I began to tell you what, who you are, your assignment in Europe, this and that. And I brought you. You said, oh, these things you are saying to me is now that I'm understanding the things God had told me many years ago. You are now defining my ministry. I'm glad you came into my life. That is by communion. Mm. It's not by consensus. Mm. So you, everybody does not. Not everyone around you is going to understand what God is saying. Mm. Wow. When Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac, the servants did not even know. <laughs> he didn't even tell so the wife. Everybody won't be involved. <laughs> okay. Just took that and then he went. You know. So wow. so so we need to settle that that you you do not have to agree with me hundred percent. Wow. We don't have to agree on everything, but that does not remove my love for you. We don't have to agree on doctrines, on everything. That does not remove my love for you. you if, know, the, if it is not doctrine of devils, in the Bible, when you talk about in the early... Yes. No, no, please go ahead. Go ahead. Finish the thoughts. Okay. Yeah. In the, in, 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 in the early church, when you use the word heretic, it is the one who takes the truth that can lead people to salvation. Mm. and distort it with the aim of teaching others to go against the truth, live contrary to the truth, and to lead them to perdition. It's a mm. deliberate effort. Mm. So these heretic, you know, these, these charges of heresies were labeling against each other. Everyone is heretic in an area or the other. Mm. It all depends on who is defining it, because mm. it's a relative word. Wow. <laughs> It's a relative word because a lot of people will hear me today now will say, is it disciples if he's teaching like that? I think that man has gone to heresy. Because <laughs> they don't understand what's it. <laughs> They're going to think I'm heretic because I'm not teaching discipleship the way it should be taught in yeah. the scriptures. Yeah. You know. Not realizing that truth and light is progressive. It's progressive. What That's I was trying to... It's what progressive. I, what I was trying to share, for example, uh, my wife and I, um, because we are, we are different. I don't know about, I, okay, I know about most marriages. The husband and the wife are always different. You see differently. But one thing that has kept our bond between my wife and I, sometimes, because I'm the spontaneous one, let's go. And she's the one that says, ah, let's wait a little bit. You know, uh, but I have come to realize, maybe in some, some decisions I want to take, and maybe she says, no, I, I'm not sure we should do this. Or, or she says something that I don't like. I don't get super displeased or just like throw her away or anything because I know she loves me. She's saying what she's saying out yeah. of love. There is a foundation of love, of communion, that even though I don't yeah. understand what she's saying at that moment, 
that love carries me through until I see what she's saying. So I am waiting to see eventually that thing. So if that foundation of love is there with us, in us, with the word and with the people around us, it makes it easy. You know, because today you see a lot of jump out of church. I, I don't like what the pastor said. I leave the church. I don't like what it's, I leave the church. Mm. If the foundation, do you love the man? Do you trust the man? Have you seen God use the man before? If that communion mm. is there, I think it will be easy. And I'm sharing this to all, our, all of our viewers and people who are watching that find that communion. Let the communion be the basis. That's what, Re Reverend, please let me say it properly. I, you, you have a way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, like 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 I said, it's not it's not consensus, it's communion. Amen. <laughs> it's it's not consensus, it's communion. And you always don't see things the same way. And that's the way we are made because your wife, for instance, is the opposite of you, is the other side of you. Yeah. You know, uh, for every coin or every every um currency to be legal tender, yeah. it must have two sides. Yeah. And they said, like they say, for every pancake, there must be two sides. So she is the other side. And because it's the other side, what keeps us together is the communion, mm. is the accordion, is the, is, the, is the harmony. It's not consensus. Mm. And that is it. The ground on which I say to people, when you come to a church and you no longer believe in the leadership, you don't believe in the vision, you don't believe in the word as we share, just go to somewhere else. Yeah. Why should you attract yourself? Why should you attract problem to yourself? Mm. Go somewhere else. Mm. Because when we are together and our hearts are together in communion, then Jesus said, whatever you agree, together. Yes. I'm there and I will do that yes. for them. So those are the things. And that is why a lot of people are in church, they will say to you, I don't see what you're talking about. Pastor is always announcing it. He's always saying that. And I can't see. You can't see because you are not in agreement in the spirit. In communion. And if you are not together in the spirit, then you are not going to get that. We, you have to understand that loving one another precedes every other thing you can think about mm. or you can talk mm. about. Loving one another, relating with one another, that's what opens us to ourselves. You know, it's the same thing with some people around me, same thing with my wife. And when I would say, well, this is what I believe God is laying, to, uh, laying on my heart. She would say, if the Lord has spoken to you, I know you prayed about it. I said, okay, what do you think about this? He said, well, if you're going to execute it, just remember A, B, C. Hmm. And then she will put her, you should, there will be that input. Yes, so sir. because our hearts are together, it's so easy for us to connect as to whatever God is saying. Wow. And that is why the people that, Jesus, that God appeared to, the angel appeared to, or the people he spoke to when Jesus was coming, were limited to those who had hmm. a ministry, who were in unison, who were in union, who were in accordion in agreement yes, with sir. divine purpose those are the people that he revealed to every other person nobody joseph yes but herod no he will kill him <laughs> <laughs> pharisees and sadducees he will kill they will kill him wow wow so wow, just, wow 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 <laughs> my god my 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 i hope somebody has been blessed i didn't even have time to say hello to our viewers i'm sure you guys are doing well i love you guys thank you for tuning i hope you are getting blessed if you are getting blessed <laughs> Put a thumb up or write, yes, thank you, Pastor. Thank you for this word. And um, just because I, be, I think that was the last one we took. It was, you gave us seven. Yes. Okay. So as, as a way of recap, I'm just going to put all, because I want us to touch on the shepherd and the... No, let me give you number seven. Uh, no, I've given seven now. Yes, number many eight. eight. Yes. So, 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 I, so you can do that. Go ahead, sir. Number, number, number eight yes, sir. is fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. Jesus began to say in John chapter, uh, chapter 15, he says, If you bear fruit, my father will purge you and you will bear more. Then shall you be my disciple. Mm. In other words, a disciple is by extension a fruitful bow. Mm. What do I mean? It is not even the vine that bears the fruit. It is the branches mm. that bear the fruit. Mm. Therefore, we are the extension of Christ. And if we are the extension of Christ, and we are the branch of Christ, then the disciple must be fruitful. 
You must be fruitful in your relationship with God, mm. be fruitful in your prayer life, be fruitful in your fellowship, mm. be fruitful in your relation in, in your business, you be fruitful in your job, be fruitful in just literally anything you can think about. Your job is to be fruitful. fruitful. And so whether it's the fruit of your body, the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your job, whatever it is you lay your hand upon to do. He says, you bear much fruit. Mm. Your father will prove you, you bear much fruit. Much fruit. You bring more people to the Lord. Mm. You fellowship with him in prayer. Mm. When last did you have your prayer answered by the Lord? Mm. It's a sign of fruitfulness. Mm. To have your prayer answered. When last did you lead people to the Lord? It's a sign of fruitfulness. Mm. When last did you bless somebody? It's a sign of fruitfulness. Mm. When last did people come to you to say, it was through you that I knew the Lord. Or through mm. you, I became more committed and more serious to the Lord. Your life has blessed me. Your life has changed me. And all that. These are evidence of fruitfulness. Mm. When last did you minister to people and talk lives and bless people financially, bless people materially, and that people can see Christ talking them because mm. Jesus doesn't have any other hand outside of your hands. Wow. He doesn't have any mouth here on earth or eyes other than your eyes and your mouth. Wow. Speak the words of Jesus. Hear his word, speak, bless people, and just 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 be fruitful here on earth. Wow. Uh, this 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 just the summary of the eight pillars. My God. We bless the Lord. <laughs> just in case for those who who, who may be just joining today, who did not know what we're talking about, I'll just run through uh, very fast. Uh, we spoke about uh, uh, a disciple must aim to be as his master, pillar two. Yeah. A disciple must carry his own cross, pillar three. A disciple must deny self, not deny himself, but deny self. Pillar four, a disciple must forsake all. And pillar five, uh, sorry, uh, a disciple must have supreme love for God and for others. And pillar six, a disciple must abide in the word. And pillar seven, sorry, we're going to cover our face. Uh, it's okay. Pillar seven says, a disciple must have love for others. Must have love for others. And then the last pillar, it says, a disciple must be fruitful must be fruitful thank you so much for all these points now you can go back and watch this later on so you can get all this for yourselves for those of you who are maybe not able to take notes but my 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 what a word sir will you believe it if i told you we have 10 more minutes <laughs> wow <laughs> would you maybe maybe we should do an introduction about shepherd and uh, and and uh, just a little bit of introduction because I don't think we'll have time to go into it tonight. Or All right, I can just quickly introduce that. Yes, sir. Can I just let I can I can introduce that? Yes, sir. And and what that is saying, what that is saying is this: when Jesus, you know, before the cross, Jesus said, "Follow me; I will make you fishers of men." But after the cross, you are hearing something like, "Feed my lamb." Feed my sheep. When you feed the lamb, they become sheep. Mm. And then you go back again, he says, go and make disciples. You see, when he says make disciples of all nations, discipleship is shepherding. Mm. It's taking time to instruct them, to teach them to observe the things he has said, the things he has taught us. And if that is the case, then you have to go, you have to make the transition between a fisherman and then transit into becoming a shepherd. a shepherd. That is the problem we have in church today. Most people are running ministries and churches with the fisherman mindset. Therefore, they are jumping from one program to another program. Always fishing, always fishing, hmm. always fishing. Hmm. So every month, there's a program. Every quarter, there's a program. There's a every conference somewhere. Weekend, there's, there's a special guest. Conference, something, something. Or oh, because we are fishermen. But a fisherman is in a fisherman is in quick business. He just wants crowd. He wants plenty of fish in his net. But a shepherd is in for the long haul. There is deliberate planning. He rears his flock. He feeds them. He watches over them with a plan, with a mindset that ultimately, in the days to come they will produce others. 
Hmm. But if, for as far as a fisherman is concerned, he is into quick business. He goes to fish every day. That is the reason we do program every week, every month. <laughs> a shepherd will take time to feed the flock and let the flock grow, and the sheep can bear other sheep. A thought in my mind. Another a fish, thing. So before yes, you leave that ahead, thought, please. before you leave the thought, a fisherman. I think I heard you say this. A fisherman. When a fisherman goes to fish. And he catches the fish. He yeah. will look. Uh, there are some fish that ah, maybe this is too small. He throws that the way. It's not as important yeah. as he wants yeah. the big fish. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Wow. That's right. That's right. So that's the challenge. That the man is looking for the big fish, and that is why most of our outreaches or evangelism are just targeted at specific people that will target as big fish mm. <laughs> big fish mm. so you know and that's the challenge this other thing again is a, 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 a fisherman has no relationship with his fish mm. whether he's a kumbia or shark or barracuda or or, or, um, or salmon um, catfish he's just looking for his fish he wants fish he wants to be, and, and and so he has no relationship but the Bible talked about the shepherd. They know me, I know them, they hear my voice, they follow me. Mm. There's relationship between them. <coughs> There's relationship between them. Another thing concerning the fisherman is that a fisherman, you know, as soon as they hear the fish hears the voice of the fisherman, they escape. But for the voice of the shepherd, they come, <laughs> they come close. My mind. They come to the shepherd. <laughs> Then the fish gives his life. The fish give uh, give their lives for the fisherman because the fisherman is either going to sell the fish, he will roast them and eat, or he is going to sell and make money. <laughs> but it's the shepherd that gives his life for the fish uh, for, mm. for, for his flock. Mm. A shepherd doesn't go to eat up his flock; he gives his life for them. In fact, the Bible says, even if he lost one, he will leave the ninety-nine and go after that one. He will. He will leave the 99, but for a fisherman, if he gets 99, if he gets if he gets 90 and 10 is missing, he will move to another river that has 120 and go for it. <laughs> a fisherman is crazy about statistics. Wow. I got 10,000 people today. I got to, but when you talk about uh, uh, the, 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 the shepherd, the, the, the shepherd, He's not going, he's not crazy about statistics. Instead, he is saying, I've lost one. I need to leave this 99 in charge of some in care of somebody, and I go to look for the one that is missing. Mm. These are major differences between a shepherd and a fisherman. So you could never fulfill the great commission with the with the mindset of a fisherman. It begins as a fisherman, there must be a transition into becoming a, a shepherd. shepherd. Amen. Wow. And there are many other, you know, characteristics, you know. Yeah, the can... fisherman is interested yeah. in numbers, but the the, the, the the shepherd is interested in the welfare of the people, the well-being of, of his flock. Mm. Wow. Amen, amen, amen. This is just wow. And we still have red flags for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we will do that. <laughs> oh, my. Is anyone being blessed or is it just me? You see, I was just quiet, trying to not interrupt. I hope I didn't interrupt much today. Jesus Christ, the word of God is sweet, it's beautiful, it's, it's life, it's enriching. Thank you, sir. Thank you for, for, for those. I know this word, this, these revelations, this opening doesn't just come by somebody just sitting down watching, you know, just, no, no, no. This has been years of dedicated studies and waiting on the Lord. And we want to honor you. We want to say we see you, we appreciate you. Thank you for being a voice for the voiceless. And uh, all our people who are watching, every one of you, uh, would you help me say thank you to, to our daddy here and say we are so honored, we are grateful for the time you are spending with us. He's giving us three days of his life. My God. Okay, three hours, but it's, it's like a whole day. I mean, we've been together almost the whole day today. So God has been faithful and we thank you for, for taking this time with us. Uh, what, what a joy. What a joy. Perhaps, let me just say this here. If anyone has a question... I don't know if we can take questions, but if you have a question from what we've been talking about, please write it to me 
so we can take some that I don't know how many we can take. But if you have a question, something you want to be addressed, like the, there was a lady, uh, one of our members who wrote a question the other day, and I was so glad we could, we could address it. So if anyone has a question you think you will want, uh, want it addressed, please write it to me between now and before yeah. tomorrow's meeting so I can collate them and have them ready. Sir, is there any, any, any final thing you want to say to someone today, tonight, before we go? Yep. I just want to say, um, I've been young and I'm a little younger now. One of my favorite songs of all time is the song written by William uh, Gator. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Mm. You know, he says, since I started for the kingdom, since um, um, he came into, since I gave him control, and since I gave my life to Jesus, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Mm. And then the chorus say, the longer I serve him, uh, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, the more love he bestows. Mm. Each day is like heaven, mm. and my heart overflows. Mm. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Nobody who has been a disciple, a disciple of Jesus for long mm. will tell you he has regrets. Mm. I've said this to my children, I've said it to younger people around me, I've said it to my team members and everywhere. If I get to heaven, if I see God face to face and there's no heaven, if all I have taught that God is and everything is not exactly like that, if there's no heaven, there's no hell, I will still choose to live the way I live now. Amen. Because it gave me a lot of peace. Wow. It gives me, it, it makes me enjoy this earth. It helps me live selflessly to bless people I'm just a happy, blessed man. Hmm. And I live, I live my life debt free, except the love, the, the debt of love that I owe people. And I try to love people. And I hmm. but it it blesses me to just live as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Hmm. It's one of the easiest, it's one of the easy I'm living the easiest of my time Hallelujah. on earth. I'm living the easiest of my life on earth right now. You, you cannot live like a disciple of Jesus Christ. And, and regret it. Hmm. You have your peace, you have your love. You, you just, I don't have anybody in my heart. I love everyone. I love everyone. Hallelujah. And I know that if you live as a disciple of Jesus, just walking by these eight pillars, you will grow, you will mature. God will reveal himself to you. Hmm. You will flow in dimensions beyond your dreams. Wow. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. But then let's take, let's take, just go ahead and just pray and just, just pray for us and pray for someone. Uh, before we leave tonight, just help us in the closing prayer before we we play this uh, this song that I think you love to hear. <laughs> Amen. Father, we just thank you for the time we have spent in your presence. It's been an awesome moment. We heard your voice. I pray, Lord, there is a sister, really. There's a particular woman. There's a woman online right now. You you sign out, you sign off, and you came back again. And, um, and, and you are wondering if you, God, you are the person God is speaking to. Yeah, the Lord is speaking to you right now. You, you are offline and you came back. You're watching me right now. And the Lord is saying, he's taking you to another level. He's mm. introducing you to a, a new season of life. You've been struggling about giving something. You've been struggling about some things God is putting in your heart. Mm. And it looks like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. The Lord wants me to tell you he is good. He's going to open doors for you. He's training you in the path of discipleship. Mm. Father, I pray, help her to be willing to be willing yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. to respond to your word. I pray for all the viewers and everyone that will watch this even after now, that they will receive the engrafted, engrafted word with meekness, yes. that it will change and transform them. I pray for understanding. Thank you for your servant, Reverend Akeli, who has been a blessing on this platform and around the globe. Father, we bless him. And we know that you increase him in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and revelation. We bless you in the name of the Lord. And we say doors are open to you. We say yes, blessings. We say favor yes, with God and man. Wherever you go, open doors, abundance. You yes. celebrate your 50th yes, birthday Lord. with one of the most glorious gifts and blessings all surrounding you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, sir. So I just want to remind everyone mm -hmm. that tomorrow we continue... Uh, with this, uh, tomorrow we'll be looking into Red Flags. Red Flags. Think about that. Red Flags. It's one of the books he has written. I almost forgot again today. 
He has many books on Amazon that will be a big blessing to you. This is the Red Flags uh, book. I highly recommend you take a look at it on Amazon. Just, just write the name. You can see his name is Shegun Olushegun uh, Olushegun Shegun Olubemi, and uh, and then just, just please go check it out. You will be, you will be amazed. There's ebook. He has an ebook, and I don't know if there's hardcover on e, uh, there too. So there yeah. are several books, like I yeah. said. Just go ahead, and and you will get, you will be blessed. So tomorrow. Join us again at the same time. So the Lord bless you and have a wonderful evening. See you tomorrow. <laughs>
tempeia 